Hi, neighbors. Oh, hello. Got a little package from Speedway. Shock mount studs. These for mounting shocks off the springs. Thinking on the front. They're like six bucks for a pair, or so. Some uh, dust caps, chrome. Not really more than that. I don't know. Oh no, I want to stick that. The most important thing in the world is these. The rear, so I can do the rear hairpins. I already have the hairpins, but I needed these. Well, for some reason, I didn't, when I ordered the hairpins, I thought they came with them. <coughs> Apparently not. Cool. On to the next step doing the rear suspension. Okay, got everything laid out. So here's the bare wishbones themselves without anything attached to them. And what I have is there's the bolt on frame mount that goes, mounts the front, the front hangs on them. That there welds to the rear diff, it attaches to here with a couple of the clevises. There's the clevises that I have. So I thread in. And then I've got large jam nuts. See, that's something that I didn't order. I don't look through my stuff. See if I have, I have more of those jam nuts. That got the washers, the spacers for the heim joints. Again, well, maybe I have enough jam nuts, but I, what I don't have is the bolt that goes through here. So I didn't realize I had to order those separate. I thought they came with that. I'll look through my stuff again. May have them here. Maybe I use those ones on the front. I don't know. I'll have to check. But I'll be back. I'm going to put these together. Okay. Got some hardware. So now I can assemble these hairpins. These will be for the rear. And the next thing I'll be working on is the uh, these mounts. These weld the rear diff go like this, front and that way. But man, what a hassle getting some fine thread. In grade five, I, the bigger stuff I do step up to grade eight. Apparently no one stocks a grade 5. You can special order it, but no one stocks it because people just buy the grade 8 instead. And if you're buying grade 5, it's just the course. Not anything bigger than a half inch anyway. I needed a 5 8. But yeah, I'm just going to put this junk together. Oh, and I couldn't find jam nuts, thin jam nuts, thin profile. I was an idiot when I ordered the ones from Speedway. I ordered... Some, uh, left hand thread I didn't check when I was looking through I just went and saw jam nut clicked boop added it to my cart never even saw the LH on the end if I get this back here see how it says LH yeah just be wary of that not Speedway's fault totally mine 
They're actually nice nuts. Shame I can't use them. Everything I've got is right hand thread. That's what I was talking about. It's a narrower profile than a standard nut. But it's not that much of a... They're like a 30% difference in width. Oh, not a huge deal, but I don't know. Right hand, left hand. Yeah. And I didn't want to wait for Speedway to order it <clears throat> on here. Hardware. That's for later. Oh, there's a clevis. Let's start with clevises. These will actually go on here. Eights, 24, gray 5, fine thread. Don't just buy, make sure it's a, a graded bolt. That's grade 5 with 3 ticks, grade 8. It's got 6 on the end there. I don't know if you can see that. So I can do this one-handed here. I showed earlier uh, grade five and grade eight bolts. Well, probably couldn't see them. Let's see those three. The tick marks. That indicates that this is a grade five bolt. And that refers to the tensile strength. I forget what the clamping force is, the maximum on this, but like a it's different size bolts have a, a different rating. Bolts are rated for clamping only, not for shear. They're not a shear pin. But anyway, I digress. And then here is a grade eight. indicated by the triangle and the six ticks. The six ticks are most important. Not of the jam variety. do with these is put that in. I take a sharpie and I put a dot on here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to back that off five turns because Speedway recommends. It's one thing I like about Speedway. You can find all their guidelines for installing the stuff they supply all there it's all accessible free to anybody dimensions and everything so you could even use their site to make stuff i mean really you can buy something like that so i'll back this off five turns one two That gives you tons of thread engagement and enough for some adjustment. That's their guideline. Why do I need five threads exposed?
just do this finger tight because it fit the line up top and bottom to be able to engage this mount. I'll put this on just so you can see the whole thing together. Clavis on the end of it. on these clevises are actually nicer than the uh, than the bolts I bought 5 8 bolts the threads are actually smoother Now, what I did buy, I got standard nuts right now, the fine thread, 24, 24 thread nuts on here. And when I do final assembly, I bought what's called Stover Lock nuts, which have uh, Not exactly round at the top, or kind of pinched in, in three points. And when you crank them down, that's it, they're locked. But they have the tendency, once you take them apart, they'll rip the threads off the bolt. So you want to put them on once and that's it. Crush these clevises down so that they're grabbing this. You just want it to be tight enough that the bolt doesn't back out, but they're free enough to move. I might even put some white grease on it or something. We'll see. Get welded on and they'll get painted or get grind this. And then weld it. But yeah, that's a Stover lock. They're referred to. For them over a nylock, so I'll use a nylock and the bigger stuff. Okay. Thank 
her my. Aha, there it is. Brand new hung joint. actually feel very nice there's like no play in them pretty decent quality price points right yeah, right hand right hand good Make sure and screw that off my bat and stuff oh you know what I did do Not short. Oh. I'm not going to jam that on that one. Sort of be assembled. Assembled for assembly. And I run it all the way in and then back it off. And turn since I don't know the gym that in there. some jam nuts for this and that and I don't care because you won't see the movie tucked behind the wheel this end I don't want the the nicer I like the thinner ones look nicer but that's just me or just have to order the right ones for speed so that's that assembled they do come with these plates to weld in they look like a speedway s Precisely why I'm not using them. They don't look bad. Not awful, but you gotta wedge them in here and then weld it up. I would do that with this plate in place. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my own plate up. And just have a flat plate drilled full of holes like you would see on an old race car, just to make it look more home built and less less kit built. So you do to so that these things don't look like a kit car. Modify, put your own spin on the parts, if you will. And we just carry on and assemble the other one. Yeah, 
So I hit a button, shut it off. Yeah. Steal that jam nut off the steering leakage. Because I don't need this part just yet. I'm going to do this rear suspension first. Get all that. I haven't been doing a whole lot of work. I've just been looking and planning on this back end. What my next step is going to be. I got to put the bushings in those springs. Get the shackles all tight. Because I got to set the pinion angle before I weld this on. Pretty much get it nailed. I'm just gonna go to two to three degrees up and then mount the engine accordingly. That's what I'm gonna do. You don't want it zero zero. So everything I've been reading, it's been, you know, two to three degrees up. So I'll probably go around two and a half. And then I'll have adjustment in this. Be able to kick it up or down. It's gonna be a really short drive shaft, so it won't have that much of an effect on it. But we definitely don't want it out. We want them to be the same. Yeah, so I'm going to go rob these jam nuts off of here, put them on here, and then everything will be hunky-dory. Alright, let me get at her. Oh, also what I was doing for the braces for the wishbones. I'm laying stuff out. See, they're tapered, so I marked the taper. The other end, I'm going to use the raw edge. I marked the taper, laid it out with the Speedway S bracket, just squared it up to the back here. So, boom, that. Should be all right with the big hole. See from here, here, to here. Hole. I'm probably gonna put another a hole in each corner just to kind of give it some balance. If I don't like that, then I'm just gonna use a plain flat piece and punch it full a bunch of small holes. But we'll see. We'll make this one and then see how it looks. <laughs> 